I've always liked having a separate PC in the living room just so I can chill out, watch stuff, have a TV in there. I don't like smart TVs. I like having a computer hooked up to my TV. That's why I really like something like this Geekom. It's powered by Asus, as you can see. It's got an AMD Ryzen 9 6900 HX in there. Now that's a laptop CPU, but it's eight cores, 16 threads, and it can really do a lot. Plus it's got the Radeon 680M, and you know you can get it configured in different ways 32 gigabytes of ram We've got two gen 4x4 m.2 nvme slots and a 2.5 gigabit nick on the back plus wi-fi 6. so you can do a lot with this machine and any emulation i've thrown at this has been completely flawless and that's nice because you can even turn on the crt filters and make it look beautiful on your oled it supports up to 8k but that also means 4K at high refresh rate, and that's what I'm looking for. So we're seeing a lot of like small computers coming out with these Ryzen parts and their beasts. They could be used as desktop replacements, but I love having one of these in my living room. So in this video, I'm just going to tell you what I have installed on my living room PC. And I'm kind of curious to know what you have installed on your media center, your living room PC, your emulator PC, whatever you have that's, you know, not your primary PC, but it's in a different room. What do you have installed on yours? Let me know in the comments. And while you're here, be sure you click on that bell because that's, that's the only way that YouTube's going to tell anybody about anything. All right, we'll get down to that right as soon as we talk about Windows activation. Thanks to Hookies for sponsoring. Now, we've worked with Hookies for a long time, and there's a reason for that. When you go and buy an, you know, a regular key from Microsoft, it's not $22.54. And in fact, right now there's a mid-year mid sale, plus we have the 25% off with the coupon code TS25. So you're going to get some money off of this as well. When you go and buy Windows 10 Pro or Home, uh, Windows 10, I believe, still activates Windows 11, so but you can get Windows 11 if you want just a key for that. Got Office 2021, 2019, and 2016 here. Way lower prices, plus 25% off of that. Now, when you buy these at Microsoft, they are three to five times, sometimes 10 times the price that you, that you just saw there. So how do they do it? These are OEM keys, and that's kind of how I like it, because you're getting the same price that all of the system builders get, all of the different companies out there who package these serial numbers with laptops and desktops and send them out and you're getting a price that's sort of similar to what you'd be paying in different markets around the world. I kind of like it when different markets around the world can pay the same price. It feels weird to be paying a higher price just because I live in a different market. So when you go here you get a key that's like that. They're technically gray market keys but they always have worked for me. If you get an OEM key the way it works is you're expected to do your own tech support. That's one of the reasons why the price is lower but we all do our own tech support anyway right? And then that key is technically locked to your hardware. So having a retail key, you're able to move your key around and whatever, but you could buy like 10 of these keys for the price of a retail key. So I'll just buy another one the next time I move somewhere else because I don't want to have to pay like a ridiculous price for something when I can get it for this price. That's just the way I am. So that's why I use Hookies. The price, the fact that I know that it's actually activating my, my windows and it's a real key that came from somewhere but it's a real key and it does activate. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on my purchase orders, and then you'll see everything you've purchased right there. Just view keys and codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit start, type activate, click on activation settings, paste it in there, click on next, and you will be activated. For me, having a PC in the living room is about two different things, media and games. I'm not doing my taxes in the living room, I'm playing some games. And that doesn't just mean old games. You're looking at a game from 2023. I've had a ton of fun with this. I've been playing it on my computer, but then I switched over to the couch just to relax. This is Planet of Lana, and it's kind of in the same family as like Another World or Out of This World. Um, and then in the newer games, you have stuff like Limbo and Inside, and this is right along the lines. There were some huge twists in this that I did not see coming because I kind of kept myself in the dark when it comes to what happens. And I would recommend you do the same thing. Just play this for the experience. Chill out on the couch. It adds one new element that I want to mention. You've got a little critter with you and you can command the critter to do different things. So that'll change the way the different puzzles work. And it's kind of fun and it's a beautiful game. I cannot recommend it enough. It's not as difficult as some of the games out there. So if you're looking for something that's really challenging, this is not a, the, the game for that. But if you want something that you can just like chill out, get lost in, it's beautiful to look at, really interesting, cool characters, um, and, and just a great world to explore, like check out Planet of Lana. You can play it on your mini PC like I'm doing here. And beyond that, when you have your friends over, you can play the new games that are multiplayer, but also all the old emulators. You'll be able to load those up, play a bunch of your favorite games from the past, and just chill out in the living room. So that's the main thing I'm doing with this. 
But now let's jump in and see all the different things I have installed. All right, so let's get logged in. I've already installed a few things, but we'll pretend I haven't. Windows got me. It's like, hey, you haven't turned on this computer for 10 minutes. And now we will update it. All right, so when I first get started, I just open up Edge, which is not a bad browser. It's not Internet Explorer by any means. And I like to go straight to Ninite. Now, I'm not going to be using Edge in the long term because it's based on Chromium and I don't like the direction that Chromium is going. So I download Firefox. Firefox is the only browser that's not based on Chromium that's mainstream. And then you can uh, download a few other things. For utilities, I get 7-Zip. Um, now, Zip is and, and also 7-Zip RAR. All that's now bundled in and it's all working with Windows 11, but I still, I'm just used to using 7-Zip. You can try using Windows 11 without this and just see how it goes. If you've never used Ninite before, you can go through here and just pick all the programs that you want to, you know, install and it'll download all the programs and give you one nice package. The downside of installing it this way is everything goes into its default directory. And that's good for certain things, but I, I like to put Steam and a few other things into my games directory. So if you're okay with it going into your default program files directory, grab it here. I grab VLC, the K-Lite codec packs, Give me all the codecs so I can play all the video files. I grab Notepad++, that's just for me for utilities and stuff. I usually just use Firefox these days to look at PDF. Security Essentials already comes with this Microsoft account. If you're going to be using this for a lot of web browsing, I would recommend grabbing Malwarebytes. That's the one that I pay for myself. And then that's it for now. You can tailor this to your own needs. Just click on Get Your Ninite. Once that's finished, I'm not going to need Edge anymore. All right, all these ads, wonderful. Click on this and you can turn off the sponsored shortcuts just by clicking on the little cog there and the sponsored stories. We don't need any of those. I'm not going to be using this for any documents, but if you're going to be using this as like one of your main PCs, LibreOffice is a great free alternative to something like Microsoft Office. If you need Office for any certain things, you can use the coupon code that we had earlier to get the actual copy of Office. But for most people, this is going to be fine. Next up, I use something called Power Toys. Now, Power Toys is a program developed by Microsoft that adds all kinds of neat little features and functions to Windows. So on this page, it takes you over to GitHub. You need to scroll down, and the one you want to get is just Power Toys Setup X64. It can be a little confusing because there's so many of them. All right, go ahead and install. Power Toys has a lot of features, but there's only a couple that I use. But you can take a look at all the other features, and maybe there'll be something there that you're like, hey, I really want to use this. All right, so I'm not going to go through all of this stuff, but you can click around and just see what's going on with the different Explorer add-ons, which are really handy. The thing that I love the most is fancy zones, and it allows us to create our own snapping zones so that, you know, when we're snapping windows back and forth, we can have custom zones. So I'll set up one real quick just by clicking on the layout editor here. And then it'll say, okay, you want three columns? What do you want? I want a custom one. Create a new layout down here on the bottom. Create new layout. And we have grid or canvas. Canvas allows you to have overlapping zones. So I like to do canvas or just do wide. How about that? Because I have a few 16 by 10 monitors. Maybe I'll use it with those. I don't know. Now we've got our zones here. It starts off by giving us one. So I'll just do one like halfway or actually let's try just to have a little fun here to give you an idea of what we can do one two thirds add another one there we go now we can have like the main document in the middle and a small thing on the side and then let's have a third option that's just going to be the whole page save and apply now we can try out those three different zones there's one oh we have to turn off the other zones first enable fancy zones we have to tell it to override the windows zones Overwide window snap. There we go. All right, we had to toggle fancy zones on and off because it was being weird. Now you can see we've got the full zone, the right zone, and the left zone. You can configure this any way you like, and this is super handy if you have an ultra wide monitor or if you're using uh, multiple monitors. But that's all we're going to cover here. I might do another video covering all of Power Toys, but we'll just cover that for now. Next up, I like to upgrade my installer. I use the Geek Uninstaller. Uh, it really helps to remove a lot of the remnants, and a thing I like about this is it just runs from a folder. So you don't have to do any fancy installation. There it is, just geek.exe. I'll just throw it on the desktop, but normally I would make a folder somewhere on my hard drive, but I'll just throw it on the desktop now so you can see how it works. Double click it, it says, hey, can we can we do stuff? There's all the stuff on the computer. Like let's say I wanted to uninstall Specky. I could just double click that, it'll uninstall. And once it's finished, it'll scan for leftover files and folders, nothing found. And this is a super simple program and I find that it does a better job than the one that's built in. Now, if you want to un uninstall the modern apps, the easy way to do that, in my opinion, is to hit start, find the modern app you want to get rid of, right click and get rid of it. 
So yeah, just like this. But I usually like to do this after all the updates have applied. I used to run a script that got rid of everything manually, but that's a bit overkill. All right, next, I like my classic context menu. When I right click on stuff, I don't like this context menu. It doesn't have everything I want. Here I have to come down and click on show more options to get the one that I wanted in the first place. So for any power user who is really missing that extra context menu or the original context menu, there's a couple ways to do it. So I'm linking you this. This is probably the wrong way to do it. That's why I'm linking this to you to tell you not to do it this way because if you go online, a lot of people are gonna say, just edit your registry. But anytime you edit your registry, future updates of Windows could revert that or break things. It's another little program here that they've linked to. You can use that if you like. However, there's something on GitHub called Explorer Patcher. You know, use at your own risk because it does change a lot of things, but I always use this and I'll show you what it does right now. It, it changes a lot of how Windows 11 looks and feels. So I'm gonna grab the latest version here on GitHub. This patches your Explorer. So you'll see on the bottom here, Windows Explorer and the taskbar just disappeared. Do not panic, just wait. Okay, the start menu has appeared. It's not finished yet, just wait. When I minimize this, we're just gonna wait and wait and wait some more. Once all the icons show back up, then we'll be good to go. All right, hey, there they are. All right, now that our icons are back, now we can mess with stuff. Right click and now you'll see properties. Click on properties. I recommend that you go through these settings and pick the ones you like the best. The things that I care about the most, if you click on File Explorer, I like to disable a lot of the modern stuff, disable the modern search bar, and I like to disable the Windows 11 context menu. So now when we right click, I have to restart File Explorer. There we go, wait just a second. Now when we right click, it's going to give us the old school right click context menu, making Windows 11 functional. You can disable the rounded corners like I've done here and a number of other things. If you have a computer that you already have a bunch of stuff installed on, be sure to create a restore point first. So that's it, I'm mostly using this for media. So let's talk about the security and then we'll get to the fun stuff next. I've really relaxed a little bit when it comes to this stuff. I used to block all of the JavaScript entirely and that got way too annoying because every website breaks. Like, so I, I stopped using the JavaScript blockers and now I just use Ghostery. I use this if I'm getting serious, if I'm using my web a lot, I use Malwarebytes. I use AdGuard for my ad blocking, add it to Firefox, Chrome, whatever you're using. And then I use private internet access as our VPN and I've got a pretty good deal for everybody in the, in the comments. I've used this VPN every single day for years and years now. It has never had a leak. That's the main reason I keep using it is number one, never had a leak. Number two, it's extremely fast. Number three, I can say certain programs go through the VPN and other programs do not go through the VPN. So if you wanna let Steam or something just use the regular internet without the VPN, it can selectively allow you to choose which programs use the VPN. So I love all that plus the price. So when you click on this, the price, is, well, that's a pretty good deal. So yeah, just go ahead and uh, check out our, our link in the description to get these good deals. Next up for security, you can turn on device encryption, turn on BitLocker, I'll show you how to do that. So just click on your file explorer here and then you can right click and then just click on turn on BitLocker and go through that. I'm actually gonna be formatting this and using it for something else. So I'll do that after, but turn this on and it'll encrypt your drive. That way if someone were to take your computer, they wouldn't be able to get access to anything. Even if they took the drive out, they wouldn't be able to get access to anything on the hard drive. Just don't lose your encryption keys. I believe that we should all be playing video games in our living room, in our bedroom, on the roof, in the back of a car, on a train, wherever. And to that end, I've installed RetroArch, or RetroArch, however you like to say it. And this allows us to play all the old consoles and some of the new ones as well. You can play pretty much everything with this, all the old retro games, including DOS. So hook this up, get it going. I made a separate video, two or three separate videos on, on this. So you can watch those if you're gonna be using uh, your living room computer as an emulation station. Then I like to install Steam and GOG Galaxy. I install them separately instead of in the beginning because I like to install them into a games folder. So I just go to my hard drive, create a games folder, and then install these. Now, if I was gonna if I was gonna be installing a bunch of games on this, I would install another M.2 because you know these most of these devices will allow us to install another one. And then for watching movies, I use Jellyfin, not Plex, and I've made many videos on Jellyfin. So if you are curious, 
please check those out. I'll link them in the description. So it is MB, but it's the open source version, and I think it does more than MB at this point. So there's no reason, in my opinion, to use MB. Some people like the interface, but it's very similar. And I like this one better than Plex as well. And for me, it works a little better. Plex seems to be a little busy for my taste. And for listening to music, I still use FUBAR and stream everything from my own NAS. FUBAR version 2 is out, but unfortunately Facets is half-baked, so I still use the 32-bit version of this so I can run Facets. The new Facets is no good. It just doesn't have album art. Give us album art. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's fine. You can use Spotify or whatever you like, but I like keeping all my own music on my own device. And then lastly, if you want some visualizations, well, Winamp is still around, and it still whips llamas' asses. But Winamp Community Update Project, that's what you want, not the new Winamp. You don't want that. You want the Winamp Community Update Project. It whips every llama's ass, and it whips alpaca asses too. This is nonsense. So get this. Now, the main reason I have this is I like to have some visualizations. Remember Milk Drop? I just get that going in my living room and then have fun. that's it that's what I install on my Windows living room PC don't have a Linux living room PC for a couple of different reasons but that's not for this video if you want a separate video just talking about things to install on a living room PC that's based on Linux let me know and if I have time maybe I'll do it no guarantees because a lot of the Linux crowd y'all are hard to please because you already know everything and you have very strong opinions it's okay but sometimes I feel like what's the point because everyone already knows you're all smart okay you win. You're smart. And whenever I get like a new living room PC, I go through this same process. And in the future, if I forget anything, I'll look back at this video of myself to make sure that I'm installing everything that I need. There are a couple other things I do. Like I, I usually uh, turn on my Windows desktop sharing so that I can log on from my other PCs. And if it's a powerful enough machine like the Geekcom I have here, uh, or even this little secret machine that I'll be taking a look at in a couple of days. Ooh, it's got a Ryzen inside. I like to install Handbrake as well, and that way I can log in from my other machine. And the nice thing about these small, you know, small form factor PCs, they may take a little bit longer to render, but you can just let them run because they don't pull that much power. So you'll end up with a slightly, slightly lower power bill by letting those run for a little bit longer, even though they're pulling more power, they're pulling such a small load that it's not that big of a deal. Also, we have a pretty good sale going on right now on Epic Pants, and it, there's only a few of these left. The Simpy, this is what I use for a lot of my emulation whenever I'm doing, you know, HDMI stuff and not like CRT, because the CPU and the GPU in this are more powerful than a Raspberry Pi 4, and they work great with Batacera, which is by far my favorite OS. It's based on RetroArch. Um, it's my favorite OS for these small portable gaming devices. So there's only like three or four of these left. And they'll probably be gone after this video, so grab them up while you can. And then if you click up here on the top, you'll have sale, and you'll see a few of our shirts that are on sale right now. It says that it's expensive. $21.99, add it to cart, and then check out your cart. When you go look at it in your cart, you'll notice that it's $5.50. So grab those up while you can, and we'll see you in the comments.